The problem with America isn't that it's lost its way or that it isn't pray enough or anything like that. It's far simpler, almost intrinsic. It's just too big. Yeah, I know. What's that crazy Englishman blathering about? Didn't we whop your asses in a war or something? What do you mean it's just too big? Well, just that. While America might not have physically grown, it's physically grown hugely, while its governments remained essentially the same size. The concept was summed up way back by President Eisenhower, the military man, as beware of the military-industrial complex. Now, when he said that, he wasn't talking about bombs or guns or anything, but a concept. You see, once an industry gets to a certain size, a critical mass, so to speak, as with the trillion or so dollar military budget, they can effectively spend merely one part in a thousand of their budget. That's a billion dollars to convince a relatively small government of some 500 or so people in Washington that it's worth spending a tiny fraction more on their military. I mean, just so we're clear on the numbers, a billion dollars would equate to $20 million for every member of Congress. $20 million. Just to put that into perspective, for a fairly regular-sized politician like Rick Perry here, that's three times his weight in gold. I raise about $30 million. And if you're saying that I can be bought for 5000 I'm offended. I'm, a, I'm offended for all the little girls and the parents that didn't have a choice. That's what I'm offended for. I mean, think about that. If the military, with its billion dollars, can convince Washington to increase the military spending by merely one part in a thousand, that would constitute a financial win for them. Whether it's done in plain sight or through schemed loopholes by the back door, so to speak. Those are the macroscopic numbers. That's what I mean when I say it's just too big. The financial pressure that can be levied by a big industry for self-interest is just far more intensive in America. But does America really need a military budget as big as the rest of the world put together? I mean, here's a crazy suggestion. Why not take half of that money, that's half a trillion dollars, and instead of building tanks and training soldiers, build some hospitals and train some doctors to treat whoever needs treating. I don't really see a problem with this. America has a military service that defends Americans, no questions asked. I don't really see why you can't have a medical service that heals Americans. No questions asked. Oh, and read my lips. Not a single cent in extra taxes. Now, don't think that I'm rubbishing the military here. Far from it. For anyone who is willing to put their life on the line as collateral, for the defense of the virtues and the freedoms of a great civilization, commands respect. But the bottom line is, a life saved is a life saved. And that half a trillion dollars invested in doctors and hospitals will save thousands more American lives. I mean, we're talking 9-11 style numbers of American lives saved per year over if that money were invested as it currently is in tanks and soldiers. But it'll do more than that. It'll transform the health of America in that no longer will easily treatable issues, which if left unaddressed can cause long-term health problems, be left untreated. In America. But it'll do more than that. You see, the last time I was in an emergency room in America, a very sick man, I sat too fatigued and too sick to do anything and watched the most disturbing sight of this mother frantically going from credit card to credit card, desperately trying to find enough money for her child's treatment. Now, I've been in many countries around the world and I've never come across any country that is as callous about its citizens' health as America. So it's not just that it would save thousands of American lives. It's not just that it would increase the health of America. It would also buy back America's soul.